Canoeing is one of the oldest forms of transport known to man. Whether in an open Canadian or an enclosed kayak derived from early Inuit craft, the instinct to paddle is embedded deep within all of us. But humans have another deep-seated instinct, the urge to race. And when the two come together, you get sprint. Canoe Sprint is the Formula One of canoe and kite racing and is one of only two Olympic canoeing disciplines. It's fast, explosive, fantastic to watch and is the essence of racing in its simplest form. There's no tactics, no cat and mouse, just eyeballs out and paddle as fast as you can for glory. As Olympic sports go, Canoe Sprint is up there as one of the most complete physical tests there is. The part you see in a race might suggest it's all in the arms, but you'd be wrong. Canoe sprint paddlers are working every fibre in their bodies and the real power comes from the legs, the core and the back muscles. Canoeing is Britain's most popular participation water sport, outnumbering sailing, windsurfing and rowing. As an island nation and with a large canal and river network, it's easy to see why and there's a different type of canoe sport to suit every taste. The flat water race scene in the UK is vibrant and flourishing, with a large number of clubs all over the country. Rather like swimming, paddling is a highly technical skill that requires years to perfect, but with the right guidance and plenty of practice, anyone can race. Canoe sprint, as the name suggests, covers short distances on flat water. In international competition, this means 200, 500 and 1,000 metres on a dead straight course. There are two types of craft used. Canoes, where the paddler kneels and uses a single-bladed paddle, and kayaks, where the paddler is seated and uses a double-bladed paddle. There are also three different categories of craft for both canoe and kayak racing with one, two, or even four paddlers crewing a boat. These categories are C1, C2, and C4 for canoe, and K1, K2, and K4 for kayaks. Canoe sprint is a sport that really delivers on every level. The boats are at the cutting edge of design and construction. Races are close and exciting, and the action is super fast. But to reach the top in any sport, you have to get a good start. Tim Brabans is Britain's Olympic champion in canoe sprint at 1,000 metres. So how did he get into the sport? Um, I was very fortunate really. There's a local canoe club um, way back in 1988 when I was 10 years old. My mum took me down to the club come and try it for a week. Um, there's what the club offered and I tried it and loved it. I just fell in love with the sport very, very quickly and never looked back really. Rachel Cawthorn came from nowhere to become K1 European champion in just six years. But her entry into the sport was very different to Tim's. I started on a talent ID programme. Um, so a uh, sort of group from the BCU came around to my school and we did like sort of tests on the bike to test our fitness and strength tests and sort of medicine ball throws and they also checked we were tall enough. Um, and then we just started paddling down at my local club which is only 10 minutes from my house. So uh, yeah we just spent the first summer like messing around, falling in all the time and just like enjoying being out on the water. Came here to race in September and realised I really enjoyed racing as well. 
we are a very, very competitive sport, even though we're not the most high profile sport in this country. We're incredibly competitive with exciting racing and uh, very few sports are you likely to ever be around the people that you're, you know, who are at the top of their game when you first start as well. And I think for me, that was something that was really inspiring. And, and at 10, I didn't really think about ever competing at the Olympics myself. It seemed so distant, but I just loved the sport for being outside, seeing the wildlife, and it wasn't difficult to fall in love with it. I'm Andrew Daniels, member of the K4 uh, GB Men's Olympic Hike Squad. Um, today at Dorney, we were training, this is the Olympic course obviously for 2012, and um, this is pretty much as high as it gets in terms of training for kayaking. We're out here today in K4, um, doing what we call a K4 1000 meter split session, and uh, it's, it's a pretty savage session. So we, we go off the line and we do 400 meters as the first one, and we're trying to trying to hit those splits that are going to give us that ideal time and out here today we were aiming for um, sort of around 250 which is world record time so as a split session that's pretty hardcore so off we, we go off and uh, I'm in the back so I get pretty wet off the start and uh, we accelerate the boat up to that speed and then we just have to maintain that speed and the best way to do that is to just focus on your technique points that the coach has told you and putting as much power down as you can and in K4 that is crucial. In any of the canoe sprint disciplines, a critical part of success comes from paddling the right boat. This is an absolutely state-of-the-art racing kayak. They're designed for speed, within specifications. They have a maximum length and a minimum width, and within that, manufacturers must make the fastest hull that they can. The boat is made in a very similar way to Formula One racing cars. It's made in uh, carbon fibre. That makes the boat incredibly strong. It's very important that the boat does not whip or give in the water uh, as waves hit it because that would slow the boat down. Uh, it's all about structural integrity, about strength and about the boat being able to withstand the power of the paddler driving it through the water with every ounce of their strength. Kayaks are allowed to have rudders. Uh, the rudders are controlled by the paddler's feet. There's a small tiller bar and by pressing that over to the right, then the boat will turn to the right. And by pressing it back to the left, the boat will turn to the left. In race canoes, there is no rudder, and it takes a special kind of paddler to keep one of these in a straight line. I started last year with um, the Fast Track Talent ID scheme. I was a rower before that, um, enjoyed, enjoyed my rowing, enjoyed gym, enjoyed all aspects of it, and um, got selected to take part in Fast Track. Managed to sort of do the tests fairly well and it's gone from there. I've never really been in a kayak but it's more difficult to steer, the balance is quite hard on one side and um, yeah, it can be a bit of a challenge in the wind, so yeah, I think it's pretty hard. I like it because it's a challenge, there's a lot to it, there's always sort of something new that you're learning about. Um, it's competitive, there's loads of guys to race. I, I want to just see how good I can get at this, um, I've really enjoyed the first year, I I've got a lot to work on, there's a lot of guys who are a lot better than me but I think I can... I can progress a fair way yet. I don't know how far that'll be, but that's the good thing about the sort of opportunity I've got. I'll find out, which will be nice. <laughs> Canoe Sprint in the UK is bursting with emerging talent like Paddy. And the man responsible for turning it into medals is performance director, John Anderson. Well, I think uh, we're at a really exciting period in our sport in, in the UK. Uh, we got our first gold medal, obviously, with Tim Brabant in, in, in Beijing. That was fantastic. But then if you look at the age of the, the athletes, if you look at sort of our women's kayaks and our men's kayaks, young group of very talented athletes who are improving day on day, week on week, year on year. So for me, I think we will go into the London Olympic Games in flat water, in my opinion, with three to five boats whatever they are, K1, K2, K4, three to five boats that will be capable of making the Olympic final and challenging at the front end of the final. It's a very exciting time. I mean, the next Olympics being in London as well, there's certainly a palpable uh, excitement and anticipation within the whole of the sport, uh, as well as within the UK as well, I think, with the London Olympics approaching. And it's just been, you know, it's great to be part of that. And it's a, a real draw for me to be coming back into the sport with that in mind.
we're getting under the skin of canoe sprint, the flat water canoeing discipline, and a major medal prospect for Team GB at the London Olympic Games. So what does it take to reach the top in canoe sprint? Senior men's kite coach and former Olympic bronze medalist Ian Wynn knows only too well. It's 100% full-time commitment. These guys this week, they're averaging 20 hours of training this week. Um, typically we do three sessions a day, um, Monday to Friday, Saturday a couple of sessions and then Sunday rest. Good work guys, really stretch for the reach. Lock on and try and stand up on each stroke. I'm optimistic, you know, it's, it's a really young team. They're very committed, they're working well. In themselves they've improved massively over the last few years. Um, so long term, it's, just, it's good prospects. The senior GB squad is fed from development crews up and down the country, one of which is based on the River Severn at Worcester. I'm Ryan, I'm six foot four. I'm Dan, I'm six foot two. I'm George, six foot two. I'm Will, and I want to be six foot. All aboard! Just a, a pure adrenaline rush, to be honest. You get the, the speed picks up because obviously you've got four times the power than in a K1, and it's just the first few strokes are just pure adrenaline. It's interesting. It's different to the normal land sports where it's all safe and sort of structured. This is a bit different, and anything can happen. So you got you've always got the the adrenaline pumping and always the heart's beating. It's always going. Training-wise, you can do aerobic things, you might do long distance or you might do running, obviously in the winter you do a lot of paddle machines, but you do a lot of weights as well in the winter to sort of build up your strength and power, ready for the summer to work on your speed. I first started when I was about 11, just doing the play boats, not racing at all, just doing the the plastic boats, the rolling around and things. Then I really started to enjoy that, so I um, took up racing. There was a few adults in the club that were taking out some groups, training them up to race, so they invited me along to that and it just started from there, really. When you, when you have a good day's training and you have a good session, you get off the water buzzing. It just really, if you, if you had a hard day at school or work and you come down and train with the guys and you have come off the water and you just, your moods change completely, you feel really, really good. I'm very passionate about my sport, um, I very much enjoy it and the guys that are in, in canoeing I think are brilliant, they're really, really nice people. I don't see why it should be a sport for guys, there's just as many girls that want to do a, a stronger sport. I mean you do need to be strong to do sprint racing so I don't see why girls can't be strong as well. Jenna Hawkey came to Canoe Sprint from Surf Lifesaving, so there's no questioning her strength, both mentally and physically. Oh, surf Lifesaving is a massive sport in Australia. Um, I think their national championships is the second largest um, sports competition in the world after the Olympics. It's helped me a lot, yeah, it's helped me learn to enjoy what I'm doing. That's probably the most important thing. Um, the ski paddling element, um, probably help with fear because you've got to be you've got to have make sure you don't have any fear if you're going out through six foot surf. Um, well now I'm on the um, women's GB sprint squad um, we're training towards the Olympics in 2012. Um, we're lucky enough to actually all be full-time athletes there's nine of us on the squad um, we're lucky enough to get lottery funding so we train three times a day. Today we're here racing um, for selection to go to the World Cups and the European Championships and eventually we're hoping to like, be training towards the Olympics. To represent Great Britain in London I think it's got to be a once in a lifetime opportunity to walk into that stadium on the opening day and know that 
the crowd's going to be cheering for you guys as a, as a nation. And then if you were to come here on race day, and the crowds are going to be here, and you're going to, and if you were to win a medal or win a gold medal here for Great Britain, then everyone's suddenly going to know who you are. And then when you walk back into that stadium on closing day, people are going to know who you are, and there's going to be a whole stadium cheering when you walk in. And I think that's just going to be something that you know is a once in a lifetime opportunity and has to be given total. Um, respect and has to be given, you know, serious commitment if you want to do it, and I think it's worth it as well because it's going to be, it's going to be a, an awesome experience. The whole event will be awesome. As strong as GB canoeing's talent pool is, canoe sprint isn't just for elite athletes. I think one of the one of the best things about our sport is that it, you don't have to enter it with the aim to become Olympic champion. At the end of the day, there's lots and lots of people involved in our sport who are just happy being in a club, being in an environment where you can just go out and paddle and you've got access to the equipment and facilities and being in, you know, surrounded by people of all ages and all abilities. Um, so the beauty of our sport is it, you're not made to feel guilty if your aspirations aren't to become Olympic champion. If your aspiration is to come down and train once a week and enjoy the sport, then that's absolutely fine too because you can contribute in so many other ways to a club environment. Clubs are an integral part of canoeing and give all paddlers the opportunity to develop at their own pace. Uh, Daniel, are you ready? Go! For racing, and canoe sprint in particular, being a member of a club gives you that sense of belonging <laughs> that can make competing a real joy. Not only can you use club boats to start out in racing, you also get high quality coaching and access to more experienced racers who can give you help and guidance. Most clubs also run their own internal races and training camps so you can get valuable experience before moving up to national regattas. When you, when you first go down to a club, then they're going to teach you how to paddle and that's just going to be in front of the clubhouse, a couple of laps of the river, um, learning about your stability and what you can do. And most clubs have a group set up, like any other sports clubs, where the first phase is to learn the sport and, and then you move into a group that's slightly better and another group that's even better than that and before you know it you're doing you know interval sessions and being taken away to races and, and you're really well and truly in the sport there and that's that's the best way to start in a group and progress up through each group so clubs are ideal for learning to progress in kayaking. A key part of that progression is developing good technique. In a sprint kayak, the sitting position is slightly different to a rough water boat. In a rough water boat, we call them close cockpit kayaks, and you snuggle down inside really tight. But in a sprint kayak, you sit much more on top of them. That's very important because you need to be able to drive with your legs, and the knees are really quite high. So we sit with uh, feet fairly close together, ready to steer with the telebar if necessary but very, very importantly, driving extremely hard from the feet against the footrest every time we paddle. After your catch, you've, uh, you've just put your paddle in the water, then you've got basically a drive phase um, where you have a fraction of a second to put as much power down as you can, and you've got to keep that locked arm, and you're, you've got your foot on the footrest, and there's a bit of a circle where you push with your footrest and rotate round, and then you have to exit the paddle stroke by, by recovering and being preparing for the next stroke. And you'll notice that as I do that, you've got the straight arm, my hips are as far round as they can be in the K4. I've got my bent leg on one side, so that as I push, my leg bends, I'm pushing with my hips and my leg, my arm's straight, and I exit and recover, and I'm ready to do it again on the next side, and now this leg is bent, and my other hip is up. In, is up so. Those are the general three phases. The catch at the front, straight arm, focusing on using your shoulders and your big muscles at the back. Rotate around using the hips and the back. Exit, and again on the other side. You've got to really focus on your individual game in a K4, but as well, you've got to bring that all together as a unit so that you can really drive together and absolutely everything's got to be on the money together at the start of the stroke so that the boat really does run along. And when it, when, it, when it goes right, it really does feel brilliant, fantastic cruise when you get it going. Really amazing. We're looking at the dynamic and exciting world of canoe sprint, where racing is fast and furious. 
But athletes don't just line up on the start line ready formed. It takes years of training and development to get there. So if you want to get into the sport, where exactly do you start? I'm James and I'm one of Canoe England's Paddle Sport Development Officers. Oi. Hey. So a key part of development for me is how people get started in canoeing. And what we'd hope is that the clubs offer a go paddling day, which is the first chance for somebody to get on the water. Once they've done some learning and some practice, we'd hope that the club again is in a position to offer a Canoe 2012 event. And that's a fun, supportive event and probably is their first taste of competition. What they can then do is progress into local, regional and national competition and through up to the Olympic events. One of the real vital things for somebody's progression is to make sure that they're paddling a boat at the right level for themselves. What you don't want is a novice paddler paddling a boat that's too wobbly and expending all their energy and enthusiasm on staying upright. They want to be practicing going fast and winning. What you then need is to challenge them a little bit more so every time they progress they have access through the club network probably to another boat. As you begin you go through a system of learning. For us it would be called paddle power and it's a learning profile. Once you've started your paddling career and you've really chosen paddling as your sport then you're able to progress out into competition and hopefully you'll link up with a coach who's able to support your development. And what they're going to do is really help and inspire you as to how to improve, what you need to work on and create your paddler profile for the event that you want to compete in. And Rachel Cawthorn really is looking like the business here today on the water at Nottingham. I remember when uh, they, the people from the British BC sort of turned up at my house and were like, well, we think you could do this and you sort of just think, well, it's all sounded really exciting at the time and you just want to go along with it just because you wish that that is like you could actually like race at the Olympic Games um, but it, it kind of feels like well how on earth am I going to manage to do that like, it's a lot to do like to go from nothing obviously in, um, in, in not that long a time. So how do coaches set about turning novice paddlers into future champions? I think we try to get the best out of every individual I think it you know, you can look for the world champion, but there's only ever going to be world, one world champion. So it's to get, actually get the best out of every individual. Driving the development of new talent is GB Canoeing's national performance coach, Brendan Purcell. But he's not just there to help the athletes. My main role is to actually help the coaches, support the, the section coaches to deliver their best performance with the athletes. So I'm there to support, organise, you know, challenge, be a third ear sometimes or a third eye to help them out. Yep. Our, our world class program, the senior coaches are, are very, very good from Eric Farrell across to Alex Nikonoroff and, and Miklos Simon, you've got world class coaches and now we're trying to work hard with the club coaches to help them understand our philosophies, our techniques that we're trying to use so that the kids in the clubs and the junior coaches coming through understand what it takes to be the next Tim Brabant. I think a coach is a, an essential part really, there's only so much you can do on your own, you need somebody who can offer you that extra bit of advice, push you that little bit extra further, that you can bounce ideas off with your training, um, somebody who can you know, set your training on a day to day basis who will probably make it a yeah, more intelligent way of coaching than, than you might do if you did it yourself. But a coach alone can't make a champion. There needs to be real desire in athletes to succeed. Well, you have to want it deep inside. You know, there is what I want, but there is what they really, really want to do. Um, I can, you know, I can be there every day. I can have the best program in the world, the best setting in the world. If that person doesn't come with something in her, his or her heart to say, yeah, today, or I'm going to win the race, and that's what I want. Well, uh, if they don't have that, they're not going to win. My job is to take these top eight paddlers we've got and help them reach their potential. You know, in terms of training, guidance, I'm there to help them develop as athletes the best they possibly can. Then they go out and race, put themselves forward for selection of various events, and you know, do the best they possibly can. If they if they're fast enough and good enough, then we put them forward for selection, and then it's the the selection committee that chooses who goes. When it comes to the Olympic Games, it's a slightly different story. We actually have to qualify to go to the Olympic Games. They don't just take the best people in Britain. They, it's, it's the same all around the world, but you're looking at being in the top 10 in the world to go to the Olympic Games. 
Sitting on the start line of a major championship is the most amazing feeling you'll ever get. You'll never get an adrenaline rush doing anything else, I don't think. Uh, the nerves, uh, the excitement, um, and listening to the crowd cheering is just unbelievable. And when you're at the top of your game, you're feeling really good. You can't beat it. It's fantastic. It makes all the training worthwhile. Really, it's brilliant. As part of the national team, a national team member, you, you get to go on training camp. So you have an extended family already within the world class group. You know, we've got 30 athletes. They spend time in Seville training together. So there's an extended family there. But oftentimes you'll also find there'll be Germans there, Hungarians there, Latvia, you know, other members. So they start to develop their own social network and, you know, they become this wider extended family. And then when you go to the World Cups, you know, the athletes, you know, do have um, connections around the world. On the team, you do feel like you're travelling away with a bunch of lads that are your mates as well. And um, you get some good banter on the team and it's a, uh, it's a great place to be. Yeah. Ben just has to drive, it doesn't have to be powerful. <laughs> Just has to drive. Yeah, that's it. That's all I do. It does I, it. So most of the time, I just hold my paddles in the air. Like this. Yeah. It doesn't even do it very well, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> so you're driving. You're yeah. the engine. What do yeah. you do? Uh, not really much. I'm kind of like, if you imagine a boy band, that you have the one that just kind of dances a little bit in the, <laughs> the background. Boys. Being part of a social group, it's an identity, I think, somewhere. Um, and you know you're part of something you're not just you know trying to do something you're part of a group and when you're part of a group you're very powerful I think personally that's my opinion when I first started flat water canoeing I was really daunted by people who looked like professional athletes and I thought oh, they're not gonna like they're not gonna like me they're not gonna let me into their little group of professional fast athletes but it wasn't like that at all they kind of um, they really accepted me. The paddling community is a, a very yeah, easy going bunch of people I think because everyone's fairly like minded in the, in the sense that we're all battle with the elements on a day to day basis whether it be good or bad um, and from my experience over the years people from all over the world that are involved in canoeing and kayaking will help you out. Uh, the places I can stay at anywhere in the world really or anywhere in the country uh, with contacts that we made through the sport over the years. It's a great place to be and you get to travel all over the world and meet some pretty amazing people along the way. I'm such a friendly app so I think canoeists are just just really friendly people. I know it sounds silly and cliche but canoeists are just a good bunch of people. They just come and do their sport with their friends and it's just a really good atmosphere. The good thing about canoeing is that it is so varied. And I think because it's a water sport, and this is the one, one reason why I love paddling, is because you really get good momentum and there's just a really good feeling about it. I don't know, for me, if I went running, it feels horrible however hard you go. But with canoeing, you just get a really good feel like you're gliding, and that's one of my favourite things about the sport. Everyone down the canoe club has a great time. That's what it's all about, really, amongst the training. You've got to get your head down sometimes and really grip through the training. And, in the dark, cold mornings of the winter, but you know, it's all about enjoyment, otherwise nobody would do it. When I think back to what my life might have been like if I hadn't found this sport, I, I just think it would be completely different. I, I, I can't imagine what it would have been like. I'm sure it wouldn't have been so fulfilling as it has been. I'm not even sure I'd be a doctor now. Um, and I certainly wouldn't have met the people and been to the places and countries and seen things that I've been fortunate enough to see over these years. Canoeing and kayaking is everything for me. There's no way I want to be doing anything else. Get in a boat, get on a river and get started. Get yourself down to your local canoe club and give it a go. Brilliant sport to get involved in. <laughs>